Thanks for joining me today to discuss rose pruning. Roses are an amazing plant, and, and I'll tell you why. Um, there are a few plants out there that help me time travel. Um, so I was introduced to the rose at a young age. I was about uh, 12, 13, 14, and I had an uncle. Uh, he was more, he was a second cousin, but I call him uncle Phil. Um, and this dude was awesome. He introduced me to so many cool roses growing up in Southern Virginia. I, I wasn't far from Lynchburg, Virginia and Lynchburg has, uh, the old cemetery. It's just called the old cemetery. And it's well known for their roses, uh, all their they're old varieties um, that are just ancient uh, and have been there forever. Uh, so Phil would take me to the, the old cemetery. We would meet his buddies, discuss roses, and uh, he also had a nice collection at his house. Uh, kind of a uh, ironic story when, uh, when we laid Phil to rest. <laughs> His coffin was covered in roses. <laughs> Hybrid tea roses. <laughs> oh man. Hybrid teas. <sighs> what a what a hassle to grow hybrid teas. <laughs> Especially in Virginia. You know how many awesome roses can grow in Virginia? And everyone's just trying to grow hybrid teas. You know, they make great cutting flowers. I get it. These don't have the, the fragrance. They don't have the, the beautiful, uh, like the Centifolia roses. They don't have the beautiful petals that are overlapping. Um, yeah, so I had a pretty good laugh. No doubt he was rolling, <laughs> rolling around that coffin, complaining about those hybrid tea roses. But, uh, so that's my little story of, of roses. Um, so in my teens, uh, roses definitely were one of my first loves. Um, so it's really important to take good care of your roses, to look for pests and diseases. Now is a good time to scout. Um, as you're pruning, you might be pruning out dead wood. You might be pruning out uh, diseased wood. You might be pruning out um, winter damaged wood uh, and also um, any, um, structural deficiencies, um, you know, just, uh, poor root suckers that are, that have thrown up a, a weird cane, um, you know, remove those, um, open up the crown of the plant. It's really important. Um, the majority of our roses these days that I see in gardens, in residential gardens, are mostly hybrid tea, floribunda, grandiflora types. Um, they're the, the the modern day roses. So, you know, I always encourage you to know what what roses you have before you start pruning them. Some roses you you can't prune like this. What I'm about to show you, um, they don't have they don't have the same growth habit. They don't have the same vigor. They're, they're different. They just grow differently. Uh, so it's really important to, to know the types of roses you have, to know how to prune them, to know how they flower. Uh, climbing roses, you don't necessarily want to prune them like how I'm about to show you. Uh, climbing roses are not tricky. They just require a different pruning um, treatment. So always hire a knowledgeable horticulturist. Uh, beware of companies that would rather shear your plants and, and then to prune them correctly. Looking at roses for the first time before pruning can seem daunting, but it really is not that hard, folks. When we're dealing with these typical modern day shrubs, we need to make sure we use alcohol before we prune. Sanitizing is your biggest first step in integrated pest management for roses. 
integrated pest management is very useful to manage pests and diseases for roses and all plants. If you're not familiar, please look into IPM yeah. practices for roses. Start with the so yes, here I, I will use loppers to remove the bulk of it. So when I'm removing these large canes, I'm looking for anything larger than a, th a thumb thickness. Simply because the older wood flowers less than the newer wood. So you want to prune out any existing canes, any old damage from the winter or any past diseases. So inspect the stems very, very carefully. When you're making your pruning cuts, you want to make sure they're clean. So check your pruning cuts as well. This is just showing, for an example, the diameter thickness I'm looking for when I'm removing the old wood. So working in a large bed like this, a large rose garden, it, it's really important to have the right tools at your side. So you'll notice I have the alcohol, I've got my loppers, my pruners, kneeling pads, I'm wearing sun protection. Roses can be very spiny and thorny, so I highly recommend using cowhide gloves, something, something farmers would wear when they're working on their fence rows or uh, working with barbed wire. So that little rose there, that took me less than five minutes to make all of those cuts. Um, after you make all those pruning cuts, you want to make sure that crown is really cleaned out. Uh, remove all that dead wood because any dead wood that, that is in the crown of the plant, as new stems grow through, they can become girdled or constricted or um, just not thrive a, as they should. Definitely check for any adventitious roots. You know, use your hands to get under there. Feel each stem. Feel for the root crown and dig it out if you need to. When you mulch roses afterwards, typically you're, you're gonna mulch this bed after you do all this pruning, don't mulch around the crown of the plant. You wanna keep a couple inches. So this is just showing an example of what you're looking for to remove. This could be winter damage, or this could be a black spot, or it could be a, a combination of both. So again, I'm working through a large bed using my loppers, mostly using my loppers. The so now let's look at some clean crowns, finished products, what you're going after. I still see some discoloration. I could have pruned lower for some of these roses. Um, but as I'm not too familiar with this um, area, sometimes I won't go as hard as, uh, as possibly I should. So I will then go back at a later date, check on the rose. If there's still dead wood present, I'll, I will always remove that dead wood. Anytime there's dead wood in a rose, remove it cleanly um, and safely. So it is important to know that you can pick up a bacterial disease from um, roses if you um, have a sensitivity to it. Um, so always use care when you're pruning your roses.
Hey, so now we move to southern Missouri where I am pruning knockout roses. The landscape contractor came through here and whacked the tops. If you can see the, the tops there. They whacked them with shears and that's it. So I am going through and cleaning out all the old wood, all the dead wood, all the damaged wood. Uh, it won't leave us with much green wood up top, but... I know these are knockouts. I know they have a strong, vigorous root system. I know this pruning will stimulate new growth. So by the end of the summer, they will reach four and a half, five feet tall, if not pruned. Roses can be a long-term plant for any garden, but time and time again, I see careless practices, uh, misunderstandings, and apathy for, for these plants. Um, albeit they are knockouts, they are still roses. They are still plants that deserve a chance to live in our gardens, to thrive in our gardens. So with the right care, the right integrated pest management practices, with the right sanitation practices, you can have a long blooming rose in your garden. Maybe don't plant a knockout and shop around for a special rose, maybe like a David Austin rose or a centifolia.